Colossians chapter 3, we'll begin reading in verse number 22. The Bible says, Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We sure do thank you for the good singing, the testimonies. Thank you for being a good God. Lord, we pray for the young people that are working hard over on the other side, that, Lord, you'd bless their efforts and help them. Lord, we pray for Brother Jim tonight, that, Lord, you'd give that hand specialist the wisdom to be able to reattach his thumb. And, God, we pray for him. God, we pray for little Samantha. Got to have surgery in the morning. You'd be with her and that it would go well. And then, Father, we pray for Bella's MRI, that that would go well. And she's still on course and everything's going good. And we pray for others. Uh, Lord, Miss Dawn's not feeling well tonight. I pray you'd touch her and help her. There are others that are providentially hindered that would be here if they could. And I pray you'd help them. But for the next few minutes, Lord, I pray you'd open our minds. I know folks have worked hard this week and worked hard today, and they're tired in body. But I pray you'd open our minds and open our hearts to the truths of the Word of God. May we leave, Lord, tonight closer to you, and may we leave tonight encouraged from the Word of God. Lord, we know it's a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. We know that the Word of God brings peace, and it'll bring joy, and it brings comfort. And so I pray you'd comfort your people tonight. Bless as only you can. Get glory to your name. We'll thank you for it, for it's in the holy name of Jesus we ask it all. Amen and amen. In the book of Colossians, we find that Paul, particularly in this chapter, is instructing those that have been saved in the city of Colossea in the ways of righteousness and uh, how important it is to live a Christian life and what entails in living a Christian life. And in this chapter in particular, he deals with some things. Uh, Verse number 2, he says, Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. Boy, wouldn't it be good if we did that all the time? And uh, then he goes on in verse 5, he says, Mortify therefore your members upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And he talks about these things. Uh, 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 he says, you don't need those. You need to mortify them from your body. That word mortify means to starve your body of those things or strangle those things or suffocate those things out of your life. So he, he deals with that. Verse 8, he says, uh, But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Verse 8 describes just about everybody you come in contact with on the job or in the world. Uh, He says, you don't need to act that way. Uh, You're a Christian, and your life ought to be different. So he deals with that. Verse 9, he says, lie not one to another. We shouldn't lie to one another. Uh, He goes on in verse uh, 12, says, uh, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, that's what we ought to be. We ought to be kind. We ought to be merciful. We ought to be long-suffering. Uh, he's, he's instructing them in these things. Uh, verse 13, forbearing one another. You just sometimes got to put up with one another. You're married. You understand that. My wife's had to put up with me a lot in 33 years. Uh, but even as children of God, there's sometimes we just got to put up with one another. Somebody's going to have a bad week, going to have a bad day. Uh, uh, they're just out of character. Uh, uh, we're supposed to just put, uh, forbear that. We're supposed to put up. We know that's not how they normally act. And, and just uh, uh, forbear it and know the next time we see them, they're going to be totally different. But it says, uh, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Uh, uh, goes, and above all these things, put on charity, uh, which is the bond of perfectness. Uh, uh, at least I got a little note next to that in my Bible. Some put on a show, some put on a smile, but they don't put on the Savior. 
We need to just put on Christ and just uh, uh, be Christ-like. So he's dealing with all this. Verse 16, let the word of Christ uh, dwell in you, ri in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Uh, can I say both the fellows sang tonight, didn't sing to, sing to put on show? They sang from their heart. They sang to glorify the Lord. So he deals with a lot of things uh, on the importance of the Christian life. Now, notice in the verses we read what he deals with. First of all, he deals with compliance is taught. Compliance is taught. Look at verse 22. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. You're to comply with your masters. Now he's dealing with those back in Bible days. If you didn't have a wealthy estate, if your parents didn't leave you of something of wealth and you didn't have a big farm where you could sustain and take care of your fa uh, family, uh, they didn't have what we have today. They didn't have jobs. They didn't have an economy. Mm, they had what they would produce if they produce something they could sell, they could make money that way. But most of the time, they lived off the land, they lived by the goodness of God, but not everybody had that luxury. And if you it was in a situation where you needed uh, 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 to survive, you needed uh, food, you needed uh, uh, shelter, you needed uh, even a little money, a lot of times what they do, would do is they would join themselves as a servant to somebody who was wealthy. And they would enter into a contract and they would work for that person for so long. And he's t instructing that if you're a servant or a slave to a master, you need to obey them. You need to be uh, compliant to them. They've been kind enough to take you under their wing and supply everything you need. Uh, you're not to uh, uh, discredit them or you're not to uh, not give them a good day's labor for what they've hired you to do. You're to obey them because they're being good to you. Now, we don't, we don't have anybody that's slaves today. Matter of fact, that's a big taboo word. You mention uh, slavery today and people get all bent out of shape. But we do work for people. Uh, we are servants to our companies, our jobs. Uh, Brother Ray's a servant to his wife. Uh, but <clears throat> anyway, uh, I just had to throw that in there. Uh, but we, we do answer to somebody. Mm -hmm. And so we are to be compliant. We are to certainly be a good employee, a good steward, uh, not to have any reproach brought against us because if reproach is brought against us, it's actually being brought against Christ because we say we're Christian. So we see that compliance is taught. But notice also the character that's sought. Look at verse 23. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. If you really have character in everything you'll do, you'll do it as if you're doing it for the Lord. Mm, guess what? If you do things as if you're doing it for the Lord, you're not going to grumble. You're not going to complain. You're not going to, you know, do a poor job. You're not going to take shortcuts. Mm -hmm. Uh have you ever torn off some sheetrock and see how they build modern houses? A lot of times, whatever the scraps are is what's inside your walls. And a lot of times, they're not always butted up just right. And Let me just say this. You can tell Ray Roberts didn't build it. Hmm? Uh, uh, we just redid our garage, and, and I put up this wall thing to hold all my tools and everything. And, you know, typically, studs are... On 16 on center, somebody like Ray doing 12 on center, 12 inches on center. You know, every 12 inches you got a stud, but typically every 16 inches. Well, the the wall they framed up in my garage is drywall. Every 24 inches, what a blessing, huh? I'm drilling holes everywhere trying to find a stud. You know, I didn't have that little magnetic thing that you had. You know, and you just stick it on the wall. You can see what a stud is. Yeah, I finally found them two feet apart. Hmm. Uh, 
And Fisher Holmes is supposedly a good builder. Mm hmm. Huh? So, what are you trying to say, preacher? Well, it didn't leave a good taste in my mouth, even though the house was built a long time ago. Huh? When somebody sees our work, they ought to be well pleased. Amen. Because we're doing it as unto the Lord. Right. Mm? We don't take shortcuts. Amen. We don't cut corners. Mm? Because in so doing, uh, we're making our Lord out to look bad. Mm? When we built this building, there were some folks that said, well, I don't think we ought to build it extravagant. I said, oh, we're going to build it as extravagant as we can afford. Because it's the Lord's house. And whenever we do anything and attach it to the Lord, we're going to do the best that we can. Hmm? If the Lord ever lets us build another one, what do you see that one, neighbor? Hmm? Uh, uh, because it's for Jesus. Hmm? So we see that compliance is taught. We see the character sought. But notice compensation will be wrought. Look at verse 24. Knowing that of the Lord, ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. Friend, our labor in the Lord is never done in vain. The Lord's always keeping a record, and there is a reward. Now, some people are going to be rewarded with gold, silver, and precious stones, and others are going to be rewarded with wood, hay, and stubble because they didn't think much of the Lord. They didn't do it the way the Lord would do it. They didn't mind the Lord, and their reward will be burned up. But there is compensation. Compensation will be wrought. I'm interested in verse 23. This is one of those verses I, I hope you have it underscored in your Bible. But even more so than that, I hope it's a verse that you live your life by. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. And with God's help, I just want to kind of use that verse tonight. You guys got three points. Told you we're going to be quick. I want to just give you this thought. Heartily and not haphazardly. Heartily and not haphazardly. Now, I want you to notice, first of all, the distinction that Paul is inspired to write. Look what he says. And whatsoever ye do. I'm interested in that word whatsoever. It's very distinctive. What does that mean? Whatsoever means in the slightest. It means anything that you do. It means no matter what you do. Do it heartily unto the Lord. You see, we have the mindset that if we could do something big, we're going to do that for the Lord. If we can build a new church building, we're going to do that big boy. We'll do that for the Lord. But we don't think about it in the slightest, the little things. Now, when I was in St. Lucia last week, uh, one of the preachers had a tremendous illustration. He said this was a true, true thing. Uh, he said he... Uh, uh, ask folks that if you had a million dollars would you use it for the glory of the Lord people putting their hands up yep I'd do that so if you had five hundred thousand dollars would you use that for the glory of the Lord yeah I'll do that see I didn't have a million dollars didn't have five hundred thousand dollars but then he said if you had fifty dollars would you use that for the Lord nobody put their hands up See, because that got down where they live. They could come up with 50 bucks. You know? It's easy to say, boy, if I had a million dollars, I'd use it to spend it to help the Lord and do something for the Lord and all that. Well, just use what you got. Whatsoever, in the slightest, whatever God's blessed you with, use that heartily unto the Lord. Mm -mm. Maybe if you... Use what you got. He might bless you with 500000 or a million. Hmm? You know, those that are faithful over the least is where he's going to reward you the greatest. Hmm? Listen, you remember the, 
the, the story about the widow casting her mites, and Jesus said she gave more than they're all, and they're all looking at him like it was funny. He said, yeah, they gave out of their abundance. She gave all she had. Hmm? Huh? Whatsoever ye do, whatsoever, in the slightest, anything you do, no matter what you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord. Hmm? Don't just do heartily unto the Lord on Sunday. Whatsoever you do, do it heartily unto the Lord. We see the distinction. Notice the definition. Look again, verse 23. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord. Well, what does that word heartily mean? Well, it means from the heart. Don't do it because you're expected to do it, or you think that's what somebody wants you to do, or it might make you look good doing it. Do it from your heart. Yeah. Amen. Can I give you a pet peeve? Thank you, Brother Tommy. I got a, let me just put it this way. I get a real funny feeling the first time I meet somebody, meet a preacher, and he comes up and he wants to know my name and immediately says, I love you. <laughs> Shake my hand. Love you, bro. Just like that. He doesn't like out? Yeah, no. no. He just looks at you. Oh, yeah, Brother Foster, I've heard a lot about you. Love you, brother. <laughs> Don't know me from Adam. He don't know if he loves me or not. You know, spend a few minutes around me. He might not look, even like me, let alone love me. Yeah. See, that's not from the heart. That's just idle words. You ever been around somebody there that way? Oh, hey, brother, love you. Do you? Now, one thing I can say about the folks of Emmanuel Baptist Church, they love me. I know you pray for me. You support me. You keep coming back. <laughs> How many times do I got to call you Marcia? But yet you come back. That's not her name. Her name's Marcia. And I call her Marcia just to get under her nerves. The Brady Bunch. Marcia, Marcia, Marcia. Huh? Either she's a glutton for punishment or she loves the preacher. That's all I can say. You know? It's one thing to mean it from your heart. It's another thing just to say it. It's like these kids today. <laughs> you know, a little boy or a little girl give them a note in school and they're in love. They don't even know what love is. Huh? Oh, I'm in love. We're going to get married. Somebody here at church that did that not long ago. I said, well, don't you think he ought to go out on a date first? I don't know. Well, it's one thing to say it. It's another thing to mean from your heart. So when you do it, you know, it's a blessing folks do things, but it means something when it comes from your heart. It means from the heart. But not only from the heart, it also means with all your heart. Sure. With all your heart. When you do something for the Lord, you ought to do it with all your heart. Amen. Because he gave his heart for you and I on Calvary. Right. You do know that love's what hung him, hung him on the cross. It wasn't the nails. Right. It was his love for you and I. Can I say it also means with sincerity. People can tell when you're fake and when you're not. Hmm. There's nothing worse than people that claim to be Christians and they're fake, phony. I don't want to have anything to do with that crap. You know? Matter of fact, I, I feel like I need to go take a shower after I've been around them. You know? They just... Ugh. I don't like the fake and phony. I want somebody that's real. 
hurting. That's what I love about our church. You can be transparent. You can share your burdens. You can share your joys. Because people care about you. It also means with zeal. Now, I know this never happens to any of you parents where you tell your child to do something. And it's like, you've got to threaten them within an inch of their life. And they eventually do it, but they really didn't mean it. How many of God's people does God have to almost put them through a ringer to get them to do what they should have done in the first place because he asked? And you know, the Bible says that God loveth a cheerful giver. So when God asks uh, anything of us, we ought to do it with zeal and we ought to do it cheerfully. Because who are we that God would even care about, let alone ask us to do anything for him? And so when we do something for the Lord, we ought to do it with zeal. We ought to be excited. We ought to be thankful. And it ought to be something that we're motivated to do, not just do. Hmm? I've been to meetings where people come in and complain that they have to have church. I'm thinking, it's a thrill to get to come to church. You know, I just don't understand that thought process. But when it comes to the Lord, you know, hey, somebody's birthday, they get excited. Somebody's going to do something special, go on vacation, they get excited. They're going to, and you ought to be excited about those things. But shouldn't you be even more excited that you get to do something for the Lord? Amen. Hmm? Amen. I just don't understand a crowd that acts like coming to church, acts like doing anything around the church or doing anything for God. A uh, uh, preacher, you're just asking too much of us. Why should we have to come back for a revival meeting? Because we need it. Because if that's your attitude, you really need it. But we ought to have a zeal. It means with zeal. It means actively. Hmm. You know, if you don't stay active, you begin to get stiff. You know what stiffs are, aren't don't you? They belong in caskets. That's why there's so many dead Baptist churches, because people are gotten stiff. You gotta be active. Take part. I told y'all around here I'm for anything. I just can't do everything. So if you want to do something for the Lord, hey man, let's do it. Just be active. Do something. Be a part. Take part. Mm -hmm. I'm learning the older I get. And boy, St. Lucia is good for me. Nobody could believe I was 59. I'm thinking, hallelujah. Dale told me, he said, every time you come, preacher, you never change. You look the same. I said, I love you, Dale. <laughs> I said, either he's lying or he's blind. That's all I know. I love Dale and Sylvina. They're two of my favorites. I love them. I got to hear Dell sing down there. He's got a wonderful voice. They're trying to get visas to get to come to the States. If they do, I told them, you come. We'll take the kids down the ark, and we'll let Dell sing. You'd love to hear Dell sing. But they, you know, but I've learned this being 59. The old wheels up here turn, but they turn a little slower. Hmm? And if you don't use it, you lose it. Hmm? You know all that part-timer stuff? That's a real thing. You know? Because some days I can't even remember my name. I know I know my name, but I can't remember it. I have to think real hard about it. So I, I do a lot, of, a lot of puzzles and stuff like that for my mind, to keep my mind working. Because uh, the older I get, you know, I had the thought, you know, there's times I, I, I walk in the room to say something to Miss Nett, and by the time I get there, I don't know why I'm there. But I was there for something. I said, well, I had something I was going to tell you, but I don't know. It's gone. Huh? Huh? Just hang around, B. You'll get there. Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It happens, doesn't it? Well, the same thing happens with the Lord. If you don't read your Bible, you don't memorize Scripture, if you don't pray, 
If you don't stay active, you lose it. Hmm. You get stiff. And so if you're going to do it for the Lord, you ought to be active. But it also means vigorously. Yeah, with vigor. It means eagerly. Be eager to do it. Huh? Anybody got a dog? Three of us, and you're ashamed to get a dog. Did you ever play catch with a dog? Did you ever have a squeaky toy? You start squeaking that toy, boy, that dog goes crazy. He says, hey, ah, 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 ah. just wait for you to throw it. That's how we ought to be for the Lord. We ought to just be excited. You know, Lord, throw us a bone. You know, huh? Be excited. Whatever you want, Lord, whatever you want. Whatever you want. Let me do it. Let me do it. Huh? It also means freely. You know, I, I, I like that old song that I, I'm a slave to the master. But really, I've been set free. And I have a will. And I to freely exercise my will to do whatever God would want me to do. Not out of constraint, not because he forces me to, not because I'm afraid he's going to hit me with a chastening rod if I don't, not because I think somebody else thinks I need to do that. I ought to freely want to do anything for the Lord. So we see the definition. We see the distinction. Now notice the designation. Look again, verse 23. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as, unto, as to the Lord, and not unto men. What is the designation? The designation is we do it as to the Lord, not for men. Hmm? If we saw every task as something that we was to do as to the Lord, it wouldn't be a burden. It wouldn't be a bother. It wouldn't be something that we'd put off because we have something else going on that we give more precedence to. You see, that term, as to the Lord, means for the Lord. As if He bid us to do it. Mm -mm. As if the Lord said, I want you to build an ark. Or I want you to start this ministry. Or I want you to go across the street and talk to your neighbor. If, as if the Lord personally bid you to do something, so you do it for the Lord. And see, when you do it for the Lord, all of a sudden it's a joy. Not a constraint. But it also means do it for the Lord's glory. Because He's worthy. And so when we do things heartily, eagerly, vigorously, excitedly, because it's something we can do and the Lord's allowing us to do, but we're going to do it so He gets glory for it. God help us to realize He's worthy of our life. We've been bought with a price. He's worthy of everything that we could ever do for Him. Just think about it. God wants you to do something, and it may be insignificant that nobody else is going to see. But He wants you to do it. Do it for Him. And when you do, it gets glory. Because you know why? Because there's all the forces of evil. There's the forces of your own flesh and the world that try to get in the way of you doing it. So when you do it, He gets glory. Because you're overcoming the flesh, the devil, and the world. No matter how insignificant, you're still doing something for God's glory, and He gets glory. Hmm? You remember the conversation between the Lord and the devil over Job? The devil is convinced if the Lord would take His hand off of this aspect of Job's life, Job would curse him. Didn't happen. Then he'd go back. Oh, you blessed him too much here. And you've done this, and you've done that. See, Job really didn't do anything that Job wasn't already doing. Now he's doing it without the assurance of the Lord, but he still lived his life for God's glory, and God got glory. Mm. And so when you and I, even if it's insignificant that nobody else knows, 
if we do it as to the Lord, God gets glory. But it also means, as to the Lord means, because you see the need, and you don't have to wait for the Lord to ask you to do it, because you know the Lord would do it if He was here in the flesh. So you just do it, and you do it as unto the Lord. That's what it means. Hmm? And let me give you just a very simple illustration. An insignificant thing that nobody else is going to notice, but the Lord will. And you're walking on the church grounds, and you look down, and you see a candy wrapper. Now, you could step over the candy wrapper, and nobody else, I mean, you didn't throw it there. It's not your job. You're not the candy wrapper person here at the church. Hmm? Uh, nobody else is going to see it, see you stepping over it, let somebody else get it. Or you can look down and say, you know what, this is the Lord's place. And I'll just pick it up, put it in my pocket, throw it away later. Now, nobody's going to see that, but the Lord will. Because even though it's insignificant, you think... You know what? I want to keep God's house looking nice. And the Lord's been so good to me, I'll just pick up this piece of garbage, put it in my pocket, and just go on down the road. Huh? Now you say, preach that, that, that's so... You don't know how many times I've seen people step over a piece of lint or some wrappers or something that somebody's dropped. And, and you know, I'm, I'm headed to go pick it up, and I've seen people step over it, and then all of a sudden, somebody just can reach down, picks it up, put it in their pocket, and go on. See, the Lord took note of that. Now, I understand, sometimes we're so busy, we've got our mind going, and we don't see the lint, or we don't see the can. But when you see it, and you just do what the Lord would do if He was here, you're doing it as to the Lord. Hmm? Somebody don't have to ask you. You know, I I hate to be unkind. I said I was going to be out here early, and I am. Thank you, Phil. It's like somebody goes in the bathroom, and we're out of paper towels. Now, they can come and tell me, which I've had people do that before, Preacher, we don't have any paper towels in the bathroom. Now, I'd be happy to go get paper towels and put it in the bathroom. I'm not above that. I've done it many times in, in the bathrooms around here. Uh, it's n not, not a big deal. But I've already had somebody say, Preacher, can I talk to you about something? So I'm on my way to, to the office to go talk to them. And somebody wants to tell me about paper towels not being in the bathroom. And I said, well, I'll get to it when I can. Then they turn they go to somebody else, Brother Ray. Brother Ray, we're out of paper towels in the bathroom. Or Brother Randy, we're out of paper towels in the bathroom. And, and it's all fine. Brother Ray, Brother Randy, they're servants. I know they'll go get them because I've watched them do that. I've watched them go get a mop. I've watched them go get a plunger. I've watched them go get things. But hey, you want a real blessing? Hey, Brother Ray, where's the paper towels so I can go get them and put them in the bathroom? Why don't you do it? As to the Lord. Wow, here's something I can do. I can put some paper towels. You say, does God really take note of that? Oh, yeah. But you know who else takes note of it? The next person needs paper towels. What if it's somebody that comes and visits and they're lost? Because I, 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 I'm going to tell you how the devil works. When somebody comes and they visit and they're lost, they're a little apprehensive anyway. Because they're coming and the preacher hollers. Phil and James jump up a lot, scream. And they're a little apprehensive because everybody keeps coming up and shaking their hands and they just want to hide somewhere. And they're real close because there's nowhere really to hide in here. And so the devil wants to point out something that they can find fault with. Well, that guy led to singing. Oh, he's up there acting all spiritual, but he didn't come by and shake my hand. Or, wow, there's a wall cover missing off of a plug. Wow, there's a light bulb out. 
Those kind of things is the things the devil will use to keep lost people lost. Or they go to the bathroom and they go to hit the paper towel dispensers and there's no paper towels because the last person there is too busy trying to find a preacher to tell him that we need paper towels. Now, I'm not admonishing you if you don't replace paper towels. I'm just trying to show you one little illustration how you could be a blessing doing something very insignificant but doing it as to the Lord. And it could be something that God uses for His glory, but it's certainly something the devil will use if it doesn't get done in order to build wedges. Listen, the important thing in these verses I've read, we find in verse number two, or 22, it says, Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, listen here, not with eye service, as men pleasers. Verse 23, lends with, and not unto men. Hmm? we find it, the contrasting thought is not to do it to please men or not to do it so that you get attention from men. Not unto mean, men means not to be seen. You know, most of the work that gets done here at the church gets done when nobody sees it sees it getting done it means not to do it for praise we've had people over the years if I didn't constantly pat them on the back they didn't do anything if you need a pat on the back to do it then you're not doing it for the Lord you're doing it for your own selfish means it means not to do it for compliments I mean it's nice to be recognized every now and then is it not but hang on here, friend. Even if you don't get recognized down here, there's coming a day you will. And I'd rather the Lord recognize us. Are you listening? And it also means not for gain or for filthy lucre. You don't do it for what you get out of it. You don't do it so somebody will pay you something. You do it for the Lord because he already paid for your sin. So again, verse 23 says, And whatsoever you do, no matter how big or how little, do it heartedly. Do it with zeal and from your heart as to the Lord and not unto men. What a wonderful, wonderful verse to live by. You know, if everybody that claimed to be a Christian lived by that verse, we'd live in a different world. Now, we can't control other churches and other people, and everything, but how about just our church? Live by that verse right there. We got a great church. But if we all live by that verse right there, we would go to a plane that this world hasn't seen in a long, long time out of churches. Probably back to the book of Acts. So let's just live by that verse. Let's look for things to bring glory to God is in our life. And anything you do for God, whether you vacuum a floor, whether you mop a floor, whether you rake some leaves, whether you count some money, whether you sing in the choir, whether you, you, you know, the song leader says, turn to page 526, turn to 526 and sing that song as to the Lord. Whatsoever we do, do it heartily to the Lord. If we did that, Lord have mercy, we'd impact this world in ways that this world hadn't seen. So I challenge you. I'm challenging myself. Live by that verse. Just whatever you do, do it with all your heart. Because you know, always the best stories end with not the biggest and best and brightest winning. It's the ones that nobody gave a chance to, but they did it with their heart and they impacted everybody else. Hmm? 
Uh, look around. God didn't choose the noble and not many noble, not too many polished and all that. He just chose us. So why don't we show the world how much we love Jesus by living in that verse right there? If we live that verse, we'll impact somebody else's life. All right? I'm done. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, why don't you come pick something out on your guitar? Maybe you want to come and thank the Lord for being so good to you. Maybe he spoke to you about something specifically and you want to come talk to him about it. Maybe you just want to come tell him you love him. Maybe he spoke to you about something totally different. We're going to give you an opportunity to come and pray. They're picking out a, uh, he's picking out a song while he's doing Let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, help us to take that verse to heart. And help us, Lord, no matter what, what it is, no matter how big, how little, we do it heartedly to the Lord and not for men that you might be glorified, that you might be magnified. Lord, help us to be brothers and sisters in Christ like that. Help us be good church members like that, good husbands and wives like that, good children like that. Help us to live that verse. Lord, we'd impact this world. Bless now in this invitation. We'll thank you for it. Speak to hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.